Number four, suppose you have a 120 kilogram wooden crate resting on a wood floor. Letter A, what maximum force can you exert horizontally on the crate without moving it? All right, so here's a picture uh, detailing the uh, problem. Right, we have a 120 kilogram block, it's wood, and it's on a wood floor. And it's going to experience some horizontal force. So let me call this F. And that's a little question mark. Right? We don't know what it is. And it wants us to find the maximum force, excuse me, maximum force uh, we can exert without moving the block. So remember, there's a difference uh, between an object moving and an object stationary in terms of friction. Right? So uh, before motion occurs, we have to overcome the force of static friction. All right. So uh, what I need to be concerned with is the coefficient then of static friction if I'm trying to find the maximum force. All right. Static friction is always greater than kinetic friction. So let's go to the table and let's see if we can find wood on wood. And it looks like right here, right? And the coefficient would be 0.5. All right. So that's great. Let's just write that down. So, so we got the uh, coefficient of static friction is equal to 0 0.5. And in order to, uh, you know, consider what, what would be the maximum force, and we're considering friction, we have to identify the normal force. Remember, the normal force is always the force that points uh, perpendicularly, right, to the surface. All right, so the normal force in this problem would be pointing up. Now, I haven't detailed any forces pointing down, right, so there has to be some force pointing down. Remember, that would just be the weight of the block. So that's fairly straightforward, right? So the weight of the block, right, would be equal to mg, okay? And the mass is 120, gravity is 9.8, zero. So all we have to do is just plug that into the calculator. So 120 times 9.8, and we get, uh, we'll do three sig figs. So 1,180, uh, 1,180, and that is in Newtons. All right, so that's the weight, all right? Um, it's negative when I do the math, right, because it's pointing down, and therefore the normal force would be positive. It would be equal but opposite, right, in magnitude. So it sounds like um, we basically have everything we need, right? If that's, if I basically, I didn't skip a step, but what I did was I realized that the sum of the forces, right, in the y direction is equal to MAY, and I know that there's no acceleration in the y direction, so therefore, I know that the sum of the forces in the y direction should equal zero. What are the forces in the y direction? Well, we have the normal force, and then we have the weight. So it's the normal force minus the 1,180 is equal to zero, and then just add this term on over, right? So that's why the normal force is 1,180. All right, so now that that's taken care of, now we can finally use our formula over here on the uh, right-hand side, the static frictional formula. So the uh, force of static friction will be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. So the frictional force of static friction less than or equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by the normal force of 1,180. So the static frictional force, the maximum value can be uh, 0 0.5 times 1180. <clears throat> so we get a value of 590. And that would be in terms of, almost looks like a T, right? There we go. Uh, that would be in terms of Newtons. So that's the maximum force you can exert without the uh, block moving. All right, so let's take a look at letter B. So letter B now says, if you continue to exert this force, right? If you continue to exert this force once the crate starts to slip, okay? what will be the magnitude of its acceleration? Okay, fair enough. So now what we need to do is we're essentially assuming, right, that um, we're gonna be pushing at the same frictional force as we did before. And by the way, right, if I were to try to detail this force in my picture, it would have been pointing backwards, right? Because it always opposes the motion. All right, so this would have been the 590 Newtons. And then I know that the applied force here, let me call it F sub A, right? The applied force would be, before I move on to letter B, would be the same as the 590. It would be positive though, uh, right? Because again, the system is not accelerating. So the sum of the forces in the X direction now 
have to equal zero, so both sides are balanced. All right, so now here's the new picture. Now what's going to happen is, let's create a new picture for letter B. So this was all for A, whoops. This was all for A, so now let's take a look at letter B. So a new, uh, <clears throat> a new picture here. So here we have the same box. For some reason it got bigger, but assume it's the same size. And we're, we are applying the same force, okay, forward. So this force is going to be the 590 newtons, all right. Um, the weight of the object did not change, right? The weight of this object is still the same. Pointing down, it's still 1,180. The normal force didn't change either, right? It's still 1,180, since there is no acceleration in the y direction. Okay, that's the normal force. And uh, now it asks, though, if we continue to exert this force, but it's moving now, meaning once it starts to slip, what will the magnitude be? So we have to think about, well, what friction are we dealing with? Are we dealing with static friction? Or are we now dealing with kinetic friction, meaning friction of motion? So the answer would be, we're dealing with kinetic friction, right? So look at the table, and let's identify the kinetic frictional force. There it is, 0.3 for wood on wood. Let's write that down. So we have now a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.3. And we can do this, we can use the same formula, well, it's basically the same formula, uh, right? But it's just doesn't have a less than or equal to sign. And instead it's the coefficient of kinetic friction. So now what I'm gonna do to solve letter B, I say that the force of, um, okay, so the force of, sorry, kinetic friction will be equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. So we have the force of kinetic friction being equal to 0 0.3 times the normal force of 1,180. So the frictional force while in motion is equal to 0.3 times 1,180. Oop, I think I did an addition there. Sorry, 0.3 times 1,180 is 354. So this is 354 newtons. Now this is the frictional force of kinetic friction. So what did I just solve for in terms of my picture over here? I just found this vector, the frictional force, right? The force that's opposing the motion. So that's 354 newtons. Now that doesn't answer the question yet, but we need that in order to answer the question because remember, they're asking us, what is the acceleration? Okay, so now what we can do is now, since we have the forces, all the forces in this X direction, now we can finally solve for the acceleration. All right, so how do we do that? So we use the sum of the forces in the X direction is equal to mass times acceleration. So what are the forces in the X direction? We have a positive 590, 590, a negative 354, 354, equals the mass, which is 120 kilograms times A. So simply just divide out the 120 now from both sides, and lo and behold, we'll get our acceleration. Notice it's gonna work out to be positive, which it should, because I'm assuming it's moving to the right, minus 354, all divided by 120. So it looks like we get a value of 1.97. So 1.97 meters per second squared, that would be the acceleration now of this block if we apply the same force of 590 newtons uh, while the block is in motion. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson.